Hey guys, today I'm going to be reading one of my favorite historical fiction picture books called Under the Quilt of Night. It's about the Underground Railroad, and um, you know, historical fiction is still a made-up story, but it's a made-up story based on lots of real events and real things that could have taken place. That's the beauty of historical fiction. Um, so hopefully you think back, and I had earlier I read Sweet Clara and the Freedom Quilt, and um, this sort of goes along with that. All right. Under the Quilt of Night by Deborah Hopkinson. Running. I'm young, but my legs are strong. I can run. I run so fast, I lead the way. The ones I love race right behind, pounding dirt and grass, jumping rocks and roots. My feet make drum beats on the path. I'm running far away from the farm where the master worked us, hoeing and picking, mending and sewing, till my hands got raw. Now he wants to track me, catch me, chase me till my breath is gone, fence me in to be a slave again. But I'll make my steps quick, whispers in the dark. I'll run where he won't find me, under the quilt of night. A river. We search long to find the little boat hidden in the reeds. Is it safe to go over? The water's deep and fast, but we cross, without a sound, like the moon coming up over my shoulder to float across the sky. Waiting. Runaways like us must hide in the daylight, so come morning we crouch in the bushes till night. It's hot. Sweat dribbles down my neck. Thorns rake my arms and legs. In the still afternoon, mosquitoes whine and tease, just like the overseer's children did. All I can do is wait for the cover of darkness. Oh, if only I could dance into the open and sing loud, the, the star, sing so loud the stars would hear and hurry out to guide our way. Watching. We run and hide, run and hide. My cuts sting, my bites itch. I'm hungry all the time. One day at dusk, we make our way to a patch of woods at the edge of town. There are more houses here, people, roads, danger. The others rest while I keep watch for a sign from the Underground Railroad, the friends who will help us get free. Wee, wee, wee. An owl trills softly. I stop my breath to listen. Is it really an owl or the railroad secret code, a sign that a friend is near? No, there he is, just a small, fat bird with round yellow moons for eyes. I try to be an owl myself, but my eyes hurt with watching. When I see a woman walk through her yard wearing a plain dress, on her arm she carries a quilt to air. She hangs it over the fence, then looks into the woods just once. I stare with all my might. I know what to look for. In most quilts, center squares are red for home and hearth, but these centers are a dark, deep blue. This house hides runaways. I am brave enough to go forward first. When at, the last, when at last the stars are up, I pull the darkness around me and run through the long, wet grass. My foot trembles on the wooden steps and my knock is shivery and quick, like the beating of my heart. Who's there? comes a voice. I swallow hard before I give the password. What if I am wrong? But I trust the quilt, so I say, the friend of a friend. Hiding. A man and woman let us in. They give us clean clothes, hot stew and biscuits, sweet cherry pie. We talk and whisper so we won't wake their little boy already tucked in bed. Their daughter, just my age, lets me hold her kitten. We follow her lantern up narrow stairs to a secret room. Sleep now. Tonight, we'll keep watch, she says. I lie awake wondering about others who have hidden here. I won't ever know their names, but I find a message, a rough carved place in the wood under my mat. I make my fingers into eyes to explore it. Just before I fall asleep, 
I see it is like a star. Traveling. Wake up, hurry. Your master and his men are close behind. Our friend whisks us through the last folds of night and hides us deep in his wagon. The cold boards make me shiver. Straw pricks my skin like needles. We go north. Across a bridge, under trees, a zigzag of here and there. We can't turn back. We would be beaten, sold away. Our chance has gone for good. We must go on or die. I hang on tight. Fear is so real. It lies here beside me. The wagon rattles, horses clomp. Suddenly I tremble. Voices. We're caught. We're looking for runaways. What's in your wagon? Barks a voice. Eggs, sacks of grain, vegetables to sell at morning market, says our driver, smooth as honey. Search me if you like. I'm no friend of a slave. I keep still as a rock, though it feels like my heart will split. But the searchers are fooled, and at last they gallop off. Our friend laughs and cracks the reins. He calls to his horses, Giddy up, hope and liberty, and the wagon rolls on. Singing. Birds wake, a rooster calls. I listen to night, softly falling away. We stop at a little church deep in a piney wood. I pick the straw from my hair and rub my stiff, cramped legs. Our friend takes a stick and draws a map in the dirt of a road we'll take to Canada. These good folks will carry you on, he says. You're almost to freedom now. Over the trees, the sun comes up. The dark pines glow like gold. Freedom! I take a deep breath, and when I let go, my voice flies up in a song, my own song, of running in sunshine and dancing through fields. I'll jump every fence in my way. So there's also this part at the end about um, the Underground Railroad. It says, I note about the story. Under the Quilt of Night is an imagined journey. It is a fictitious story inspired by the Underground Railroad, and it mixes fact and folklore. The Underground Railroad, of course, was not actually underground, nor was it a railroad. It was a secret network of people who helped others to escape slavery. It was most active in the 1850s, in the years just before the Civil War. Just as we don't learn the name of the girl who tells this story, we don't know of the names of most who escaped on the Underground Railroad. Activities took place in secret and weren't written down. Those fleeing slavery faced incredible danger and hardships. The free blacks and whites who helped them also faced risks. Many stories have grown up around quilts in the Underground Railroad. Some think quilts included hidden messages or were hung to mark safe houses, while others believe those stories are simply folklore. We do know that fugitives were hidden in many ways, sometimes in secret rooms or tunnels, other times in wagons with false bottoms, or simply under straw in the back of carts. We also know from songs like Follow the Drinking Gourd that enslaved people used the North Star to help them locate North, where Canada and freedom lay. In this story, the girl finds a star someone has carved in the floor and is hopeful it's a sign of freedom. When I was in fourth grade, the Underground Railroad was mentioned in just a few lines in our history textbook. Today, many books and internet sites have information about this part of our history. In communities, people are working together to remember family stories and to find and preserve Underground Railroad routes and houses. But some of our past may always be hidden from us. Deborah Hopkinson. Remember, that's the author of the book. So, you know, historical fiction is probably my favorite genre. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I really like this book. But the other reason why I really like this book is the way that she uses figurative language. She says all sorts of, um, she has all sorts of similes and metaphors in the book. So um, if you have time, now that I've said that, go back and listen to the story again or check it out from the library on your own on the app and um, see if you can find some of her figurative language.